Hello, welcome to my Zenhu guide. So, what can you expect from this video? In this video, I will show you Zenhu's moveset, how to apply pressure with Zenhu on your opponent, some tricks and strategies. But I won't go into detail into max punishments or um, frame checks. Most of the time, it's just light into unblockable or zone into unblockable. And I'm pretty sure that other YouTubers will feature that in their videos. Alright, let's start. The thing about Zanhu is all his finishers are unblockable. So you can go into light into unblockable light or heavy into unblockable light and vice versa. So that means heavy, heavy, I um, mean heavy into unblockable heavy and of course heavy into unblockable light. So your main pressure tool is of course your unblockable. So I'll show you now a trick with him. Maybe you will face a situation where it's too hard or maybe too risky to reach the unblockable part of your chain. So in this case, there's a nice trick. So just go backwards and with your first attack and perform your unblockables. The forward movement of both unblockables, light or heavy, doesn't matter, is very generous. And that's where the real fun begins. So, if he goes for a heavy parry but you commit into a light, he will eat the light because he will, he's waiting for the heavy timing. But if he goes for a light parry and you commit into a heavy, he will eat the heavy. That's it. That's his pressure tool. But of course you have to consider option selects, dodges, dodge attacks, fast heavy cancels like from Aramusha or Rochi. If you consider all these options, you should be fine in 1v1. But I think Zanhu is more a team fight hero. I tell you more in the hitbox section of the video. There's also another thing about whiffing your attacks. In most cases, you are allowed to whiff your attacks and get free access to your unblockable chains. But if the enemy is just too close, he's able to block your attack and you are forced to commit into a heavy or into a zone attack to reach to the unblockable part of your chain. But there's a little trick you can do. So if the enemy is too close and you don't want to throw an attack, you can just simply guard break him. If you guard break him and he counters it, that brings you into perfect whiffing range. So it doesn't matter if he guard breaks you or you guard break him. A counter guard break brings you always into whiffing range. One more cool thing about him are his dodge attacks. So they are fast, but they are only dealing 14 damage and they are considered a light attack. So it doesn't matter if you input the light or heavy dodge attack. They are all light attacks. So if you get parried, your enemy is able to punish you with the heavy. But the most important thing is they are fast, so you can punish black Briar sheep bashes on reaction and on confirmed hit, you can chain into unblockable lights or heavies. And that leads me to the next topic. You can finish all your moves with your unblockable finishes like zone into finisher, I mean, so I to unblock the finisher, dodge attack into unblockable finisher, forward dodge light attack into unblockable finisher, forward dodge heavy into finisher, and so on. So in fact, you can chain every move into the unblockable finisher. So there's one more move on his move list, and it's called subduing counter blow. So, like Kensei, you have superior block in the direction you dodge. So, if you dodge to the right, of course, your superior block is on your right. And the special thing is, if you block an attack, you can perform the subduing counter blow. So, it takes a lot of stamina away, but the following hit, light or heavy, is not guaranteed. So, your enemy is still able to carry it. But when your enemy is low on stamina, why not? Just go for the subduing counter blow. So if you bl superior block one attack and perform the subduing counter blow, it takes a, a lot of stamina away. So there's a chance to put him out of stamina, especially when your enemy is throwing out a heavy attack. Zanhu is also able to cancel his recoveries from a zone attack, from a dodge attack and from all his opener attacks. But not from his finishers, so you have to be careful on this point. 
With that, you can actually throw out an no, opener light, chain it into a zone and then into an unblockable zone. Or just throw it an opener light and dodge away. You can be really creative with that. But actually, it's that's a really cool thing in team mods. So you can throw out an attack and dodge away from any threats. So that's a big plus for Zenhu. Alright, that's it. I think I covered the most important thing about Zenhu. So, in fact, he has actually no access to variable heavy timings like Centurion, Hyper Armor, Neutral Pressure or Unreactable Attacks. So all your pressure comes from your unblockable mix-ups. That's the tutorial about his moveset. I'm pretty sure Freeze will do a whole video about frame check or max punishments, but in fact it's just light into unblockable heavy or zone into unblockable heavy. And this works on revenge knockback, out of stamina throw, out of stamina parry and so on. Okay, let's hop into another very important topic. That's it, hitbox. So every time when I see a hero with a really big weapon, I ask myself, hey, how is his hitbox? And when I have to describe it, it's just weird. And so the thing is, his unblockable left heavy attack has a really amazing hitbox, but the right one is super unreliable. So every time when you throw out in a red unblockable attack, it's very unlikely you hit the person on your right. So, but if you throw out the left unblockable, it's amazing. So I can show you some clips. If you play Zanzu, you always want to keep your external attack on your left side to make full use of your unblockable attack. So it's very easy to hit uh, external attackers from there. But the right unblockable attack, uh, it's not that good. The neutral Harrys are okay, but the right unblockable, it's very unreliable. So I won't, I don't recommend that move as an unlock attack. But here, fun fact, it has a huge hitbox on your left if you use the right unblockable. On the other hand, his zone attack is very good. It's 500 milliseconds, it's 20 damage, you can use it as option select, it's undodgeable, and you can link it into your finishers. So overall, very good. Now to the unblockable light finisher. So it's possible to land some unblockable, no, unlock light attacks, but he has the external touch it has to be in front of you. So if he's just slightly on your left or on your right, it doesn't work anymore. Thanks to the generous forward movement, often you just pass your external touch it. So I recommend to use the unblockable light finisher only when the external touch is in front of you. Or you want to hit the locked on target with an unblockable light. Now to the dodge attack. How is the hitbox there? And it's actually bad. So it can work, but most of the time you will miss. You have a small hitbox on there, but for 40 damage, it's not really worth the risk, to be honest. You can see how desperately I try to make it work, but I just end up eating all the hits and I'm missing a lot of attacks and exposing myself so it can work if you know exactly the hitbox but it's not worth it at all okay that's about hitbox so let's jump into feats 
With the new hero comes four new unique feats. The fire task, a throwable fire trap, a passive that increases your attack damage and your feats damage when the enemy is on fire, and the ultimate. Okay, fire task is just a kunai that deals 10 damage, but when the enemy is on fire, the damage increases to 25. And the passive, when someone's on fire, the damage gets increased. So your fire just now deals 35 damage, and all your basic attacks deals 40% more damage. So now comes the fire trap. It's a really versatile feast. You can use it to defend the points, or to, you can use it in team fights. It's really cool. So in fact, you just throw a fire trap. And everyone inside of the fire trap or in the radius gets 30 damage. So, and in combination with your passive, really cool. But before you scream overpowered oh, or oh, it's that's totally lame, ah, it's just okay. So, you cannot hide the fire trap like a regular beer trap or a stun trap. Like, I tried here to put the fire trap into an elevation, but it's always visible. So, Hiding the fire trap in elevation is almost impossible, it seems. But you can still hide the fire trap in bushes, so that's the best spot to hide the fire trap. Or you can hide the fire trap behind sharp corners or big pillars. Where people see the fire trap when it's too late. Okay, now we're coming to the last feat. So, your ultimate is just an orbital bombardment for 60 damage. So, the impact damage is for 20, and the touches will burn for 40 more damage. So, dot damage, 40 damage. Overall. 60 damage, that's really cool. But there's a trick to multiply your impact damage. When there's almost no space for the targets to move around, so like here in this choke, and you call your ultimate, a uh, circle uh, appears. But when they stand on the overall circle, they take both the double damage, that's really cool. The fire damage stays the same, 40 damage, but they took both 40 damage alone from the impact instead of 20. So if you choose your crown wisely to fight, you can do some crazy damage on the enemy team. Like just look around, fight on the choke points, call your ultimate and deal a shit ton of damage. Yo, that's everything I found out in the testing phase. Alright, that's it with the guide. So, thanks again to Ubisoft for the opportunity to, uh, to participate in early access to test the new hero. And I hope you like him. For me, I like him, except for the weird hitbox sometimes. But overall, he brings fresh winds to the Fauna hero pool. Alright, see you in next season. Bye bye.